Peace everyone, Unmask Art here, and today I am joined by my good friend Udon, and I'm going to be trying out some of the uh, Hemi gouache, the jelly gouache I have here. So let's just get right into it. I'm going to be doing a color chart. I always do color chart, but look at these beautiful colors here. They rival even the colors of... <clears throat> oh, sorry, buddy. <laughs> hey there, Remy, uh, Cece, Chandri. Good to see all of you. Hope you're having a lovely day. I'm just going to get right into this, starting with uh, the red here, and Udon's just going to hang out on my neck, I guess. I've never, I haven't even dipped a brush into these yet, so they are freshly opened. That is a bright red. This is my first experience with them, so I'll give you my comments as I work on them and tell you how they feel and all of that, and hopefully you'll get a good, good sense of what they look like. They paint really smoothly, almost, almost oil paint-like as far as the way that they, they feel moving across the paper. Now I'm just using a cheap no name paintbrush here so nothing fe no, nothing special with the paintbrush oh hey there Ulrich. uh linda good to see you hope you're all doing lovely once uh udon starts trying to get away i'll put him back in his enclosure but i thought it'd be nice to hang out with him for a little bit He needs, he needs some attention, so he's always used to me. Now, these are supposed to be fast drying and opaque, which is sort of the, the nature of gouache in the first place. And I can see my first few paint brushes or paintbrush strokes have started to dry a little bit, but there's a, still quite a bit of maneuverability after applying them, so it's pretty good. So I'm not sure if this requires multiple layers or not, or if it's going to dry really, really opaque, but I'm gonna go ahead and clean this brush. And I'm just, you just clean the brush with water. So nothing, nothing special in that regard. Basically, you sort of treat it like watercolor or even acrylic. All right, so now I'm going to dive into the next color here. And this is a brownish color. And again, the paint feels really, really nice. It's very smooth paint. Or gouache. It's very smooth gouache. And this is not just my first experience with uh, the Hemi gouache, but also with gouache in general. I, I have tried acrylic gouache, but as far as I've discovered on my own and also found out about acrylic gouache. Acrylic gouache isn't really considered real authentic gouache because it sort of just feels like regular acrylic paint. Um, whereas this, this does not feel like regular acrylic paint. This feels almost like I'm brushing with oil paint, but it it dries really, really fast and really, really opaque. You can see the red there is already quite dry. I don't even think if I were to brush over the red, uh, any of the paint would move. I'm interested to see if a second layer of the red will be necessary. I'm just gonna try to run through these 
Um, I'm just going to try to run through these colors as quickly as I can for Udon's sake. And then maybe next week I will do my first project uh, with, with this gouache, perhaps. My paintbrush is still a little wet, so I'm wondering if the water is having an effect on the translucency. Uh, I know that you can mix water with these just like acrylic and watercolor. And as far as I've discovered as well, you can sort of treat these like watercolor paints, like really, really dilute them with water. But that's not my intention here today. I just want to see what the colors look like on this paper. And I'm not using anything special for the paper. This isn't watercolor paper or anything. This is a uh, this is Stonehenge vellum. Uh, I just grabbed sort of a thick paper I thought would be able to handle the paint. Uh, I am getting a little bit of curl in the paper, but hopefully it, it may flatten out once the paint dries. I'm not 100% certain of that, but we'll see. Just keep moving along here. Udon's trying to get away already. You know, this paint comes out of the paintbrush really, really easy. Like, I'm barely dipping it in the water, and it is just, it just falls right off of the paintbrush. And this is a synthetic bristled paintbrush um nothing fancy by any means so Now I am doing pretty thin layers of paint here. I want to see how opaque they will dry. I can the red I think is probably going to need a second coat. So maybe the red paint is not as opaque as some of these. I can see that the brown the brown is very very opaque. I didn't put like any extra paint than what I did with the red. Hold on, try and Quit crawling down my back. Come back here. Show everybody your cute little face. I'm trying to get away. He's probably a little grumpy because I woke him up just for the live stream. <laughs> he's always uh he's always tucked away in his cave sleeping when I'm streaming and even when I have the udon cam you can't see anything but his a little bit of his side. If you're lucky. Udon, you can't go that way. Come back. I've I've been putting off buying this gouache for for some time. I know some of you probably recall me talking about wanting to get it but but refusing to buy it just because I have so many other mediums that I'm trying to focus on. Next Friday I'll be oil painting. Oh, speaking of Fridays, tomorrow uh, for anybody that may not have heard, tomorrow I'll be doing the live critiques. Uh, I have links uh, for the Facebook group and the Discord. 
in the description. You can click on those if you'd like and uh, submit a, some of your artwork for the live critique session tomorrow. So I'll be doing that tomorrow at this time. I thought that that was black. That looks almost black, but I think it's just a really dark blue. This one here, this is definitely black here that I'm putting down. I don't even know if you'll be able to see the difference of these on camera, because that is a really, really dark blue. Maybe it will show up different uh, when it's dry. Maybe it will show up a little bit more blue than black once the, the paint dries out a bit. Yeah, it seems to be turning a little bit blue. It's already started to dry. It looks like looks like the brown and the purple and the red are all completely dry. The blue is about 80% dry. You can almost watch it drying. Like you can see the the wet part of the paint. You can see the wet part of the paint like slowly drying. Right, onto this bright orange color here. The paint is very, very vibrant looking when it's wet. When it dries, it gets a little less vibrant, but it's still really nice looking. So that's something to keep in mind for my first painting. I'll have to probably mix the paint into something that's a bit more vibrant than what I'm aiming for and then see how it dries. And I'm a little uncertain of the degree of mixing that I can do uh, without the paint just drying out. That's, that's something that I'm a little uncertain about. But maybe I'll do some, some little tests off camera before I stream a disaster but I if I'm not mistaken uh, the the biggest difference between actual gouache and the acrylic gouache that I tried some years ago that I didn't really like is that uh, you can always add water to the the paint to reactivate it I think I think I came across that. I truthfully don't know a lot about gouache, um, so don't quote me on that, but I think that's the difference, or one of the differences between gouache and acrylic gouache. So if I mix up a color on a little palette, then perhaps if that little blob of paint um, dries out before I can use it all, then maybe, move on, you're gonna fall. You're just being goofy, aren't you? Uh, maybe, maybe I can reactivate the paint uh, after mixing it if it happens to dry. You want to go back to sleep, don't you? Hmm. You just want to sleep. Lazy bum. Hey there, Patricia. Cherry, good to see you. Norlene. Oh, Udon, you have this color on you. You want you want a face painting? You want a face painting, Udon? Well, 
when he was when he was younger, when I first got him, uh, he used to just curl up on my hand like this and go to sleep. He would just sleep on my hand just like this. Now he's too restless. I used to I used to just sit there and play video games with him curled up on my hand. So how's how's everybody's week been going? We got some pretty nice weather today. Yeah, that's that's a really good ochre color. The purple and the blue uh, look like they could use a second layer also. Move it on. Get back up here. <clears throat> so some of the colors are a little bit more translucent, which I expected. I, I didn't really expect them to be like perfectly opaque, but uh, maybe I was just a little bit light on the layer, and I should have put a little bit more paint on. Hood on. Quit trying to squirm away. I'm going to put you back in your cave. You made it halfway through. We're trying to escape. It's been amazing. That's good. And I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, that's that's really good to hear. I've had a super productive super productive week. So I feel good. I wonder if I should mix this paint. Maybe I should have done that. Maybe I should have, have mixed the paint a little bit in the in the container. Perhaps it needed to be mixed. I, I don't know. Some of the paints do look a little separated, perhaps. I didn't even consider needing to mix anything. And in, in case anybody's worried about udon here, the paint is non-toxic and it doesn't have fumes, so no no harm to this little guy. I wouldn't do this if I was oil painting. He's rather sensitive to chemicals in the air. They can make him sick, so if I was oil painting, I don't think I would want him to be around but it's okay for him to be around when playing with this paint.
Uh, no, you didn't miss the beginning. There's no water added to the squash. This is, this is called jelly gouache. Yeah, this is, this is called jelly gouache and it comes in like little, it comes in little containers that look like pudding, like little pudding containers. Actually, um, the dark brown, like the next color that I'm going to add uh, the, for this square over here, that one genuinely looks like chocolate pudding. Like it just looks like chocolate pudding in the container. Don't fall. Kid term, uh, kids midterms and meltdowns. Yeah, that can be, that can be a stressful time. I don't, I don't miss midterms in college or anything. That's for sure. Those, those were always a headache. See the pretty colors, Udon? No, of course you don't. You can't see pretty colors, can you? You don't see anything. You're blind. You can't see a gosh darn thing. He's not really blind, but let's just say snakes aren't known for their eyesight. <laughs> Let go of my hand, I need to paint. Yeah, this brown here is the one that looks like chocolate pudding inside the container this one is a really really rich dark brown this is this is a nice dark brown you're making this weird udon quit dangling Udon has me all tied up here. There you go. Hang on, hang on there. All right, last row of colors. And then I'll do a quick touch up. Or second second layer. This color feels a little bit translucent. I don't I can't quite tell if the water I'm using to clean the brush has really really infected this color or this color is just a a lot less opaque. It, it appears going down that it's a bit more translucent than the other ones. Although this color is lighter than some most of the other colors, so it could just be a property of the, the pigment here. We'll see what it looks like when it dries because they do change quite a lot in drying. Well, the little put the little pudding caps or containers that this gouache comes in doesn't have a lid, so um, the whole container itself has a lid. But I'm not sure how well the lid will preserve the paint from like drying out. That's one thing that I have zero experience with yet, and so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a piece of uh, saran wrap plastic wrap 
and I'm going to put it over top before putting the lid on. That way, I just get that slight little extra bit of protection. Because um, I probably won't use the paint for a few days, which I don't think is enough time for it to have any drying out issues. But I thought, well, hello there. I thought that maybe it would create like a dry film on top of the paint. I really have no idea. That's something that's that's something I'm gonna have to look into a bit more because I haven't looked at anything for this squash. Um, I just came across it, I don't know, six months ago I heard about it and it seemed interesting and I wanted to try gouache anyway, so I figured why not get this? And it just happened to be, I, I was uh, getting some supplies on Amazon a few days ago. And Amazon was like, oh, you remember when you looked at this gouache? <laughs> Do you want to buy it now? <laughs> and I was like, gosh darn it, Amazon. Yes, I want to buy it now. I wanted to buy it six months ago. But um, so I, I finally broke down and I was like, whatever, I'll just add it to my cart. That's how that's how they get you. That's how they get you. Hey, you're spending money. Do you want to spend even more money? Uh, gouache dries out even in tubes. Well, that's the that's the thing with this gouache. This is not regular regular gouache. This is jelly gouache which I think is different than the gouache that you would get in tubes because the gouache that you get in tubes looks a little bit more like acrylic paint. It has a thicker paste-like thing where this is this is looks like pudding. Like it's very jelly. It looks like the consistency of of grape jelly. Two whites. That seems a little unnecessary. Two different whites, I might add. The, this is titanium white, and this is just white white. The titanium white looks pure white, whereas this one looks a little eggshell. This one's a little bit warmer. Yeah, this one is definitely warmer. Are you getting comfy? Are you comfy yet, Udon? Hmm? Comfy? All right, Udon. You're squeezing a little bit hard, buddy. <laughs> squeezing just a little bit too hard. Calm down. Uh, yours are Windsor and Newton. Udon, I gotta talk. Quit squeezing so hard. <laughs> You're not going anywhere. You're not falling. You're fine. Relax. Udon, <clears throat> Udon's trying to, to end the stream early by knocking me unconscious. I, I just got two colors left. You can relax. You're fine. So this is like a ultramarine blue, a thalo blue, like a sap green. <clears throat> I 
Oh gosh, that's not the right color. I was looking at the sap green down here and then when I looked up at the palette, let's just scoop this off. It was one of those moments, you know, where you accidentally dip your paintbrush in your coffee or your tea. <laughs> you go to clean it off and you use the wrong cup of water. This one's probably going to need a second layer just to make sure that I get all that sap green out. It doesn't look too bad. One thing I noticed is there's like no evidence of brush strokes with most of the really opaque colors. Yeah, Udon's very active. All right, last color. This isn't a, a like a leaf green, a little bit brighter, more saturated green. Pretty good color selection. Yeah, pretty pretty decent color selection for 15 color or 18 colors. I mean, that blue this blue right here is so dark, it makes the black look like gray. Like, doesn't this one look a little bit darker than this one? I mean, even the dark brown almost looks darker than the black. All right, let's go over a few of the colors. I'm definitely going to redo that first red. Um, and that pink fuchsia color. And I think the phthalo blue, or the ultramarine blue, I mean. So let's do another layer of this red. Because I want it to be nice and opaque. Oh yeah, that's going to work really well. And I'm not putting the paint on thick or anything like that. Really thin layer. All right, let's do another layer of ultramarine. Now I feel like if this if this dries more opaque, I feel like it's gonna be a darker, a darker ultramarine, like really, really dark. But I wanna get like the truest color that I can without the paper having influence, because obviously if the white paper shows through, it makes the colors appear lighter than what they truly are.
let's see. Let's just do this pink. This will be the last color I do a second coat on. I think the other ones look good enough. I don't I don't need it to be like perfect. And then I will untape revealing the perfect little squares and I will have another color chart to hang on my wall. All right, Udon, I'm all done, buddy. I just gotta untape it. Okay, Norlene, you take care, have a lovely day. Let's see, I'll pull off these ones over here first. Oh, hey there, John. Good to see you. Just in time for everybody's favorite part, the untaping. Revealing these lovely, colorful squares. Let's, don't fall. Come back here. Hang, hang out right here just for like Five more minutes, okay, buddy? Just chill out. I take the I take this tape off, Udon. You you can go back to sleep, okay? You lazy bum. Alright, let's take these middle ones off now. Yours dried a bit blotchy? Uh, these ones do not look blotchy. These ones do not look blotchy at all. They look amazingly flat. Now, on camera, they do look a little blotchier than they do in person, but uh, I would say partially because a couple of the colors I arguably should have done a second layer on. For sure, the phalo green down here probably deserves a second layer. You can see a little bit of the brush strokes, but um, I mean the black, the dark blue here, the cobalt blue, this orange ochre, these two, this red, this one's gonna dry really nice. The whites are very white. Um, I think with maybe better paper also, I don't, I wasn't sure which paper to use, truthfully. Udon, calm down with the squeezing, buddy. Quit. <laughs> but yeah, I wasn't sure which paper to use, so I just grabbed this one. It's sort of a multimedia friendly, friendly paper. I'm like Udon here. <clears throat> and so it it did flatten after it buckled a little bit with the initial application of the paint it was sort of getting a little bubbly but it, it's pretty flat now so it's not too bad my next step is to close off this gouache to make sure it doesn't dry out and then prepare a drawing for the next painting. But anyways, there are the colors. I am going to 
let Udon go back to sleep. But the colors came out really nice. Um, I think these are going to be fun. These are going to be a fun addition. What do you think, Udon? You like these colors? What's your favorite color? You like the green? The yellow? The ochre? Hmm? You like the ochre? <laughs> he can't see colors. Anyways, uh, thank you guys for coming by and hanging out while I made my color chart. Like I said, next week I probably am going to try to do a painting, like an actual painting. Um, I just wanted to, to jump on and do a live stream of the color chart. I was going to do this today regardless, so I figured why not hang out with my good friend Udon here, do some painting, uh, and hang out with you guys as well. So I hope that you enjoyed. I appreciate the time and uh, the questions and just hanging out. It's always fun. Don't forget about the live critique session tomorrow, uh, and I will see you then. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. Peace.